Alright, what is going on everyone? My name is James. As you guys may or may not know me, I'm one of the alpha traders here, helping you guys navigate the markets here each and every week. Uh, looks like we got a nice full house here tonight, so very good, very good. Uh, just to let some of you guys know who might be new to this uh, Discord, basically for the week here, every Sunday we do go over the, the markets as a whole, uh, look over a couple of stocks including SPY, QQQ, uh, all the ones that we all kind of you know watch uh, and, and associate with the market movements, etc. And then once I get through SPY QQQ, and then um, we'll go through NQ and ES for futures, just to let you guys know what's kind of going on right now. We'll start to go over some of the uh, stock suggestions. So you're more than welcome to start throwing in suggestions um, at the moment, but I will get to them as soon as I finish up SPY and QQQ. So uh, with that being said, moving into the market, looking over SPY specifically, as far as what happened last week, what we can kind of assume might happen next week. Um, Obviously, a very, very bearish week. Uh, we saw three red weeks in a row so far, and it looks like the strength is just getting stronger and stronger. Um, now, one thing to note, get rid of this drawing. One thing to note here is we did see a very similar setup to this, you know, not too long ago, a couple months back, uh, where we did bounce and continue on to higher highs. I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but it is something worth noting that we had the almost exact same formation here with, you know, progressively increasing selling pressure with larger bars, but we ultimately did get the push up afterwards. So again, not, not saying that's going to happen, but we have been respecting this weekly 20 EMA very well. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see, you know, kind of what happens there uh, this week. So as of right now, you know, looking very bearish. I wouldn't be looking calls on SPY uh, or looking upside on SPY at all right now until we see some confirmation back to the upside. So we kind of mentioned in last week's video, uh, we had this gap right down here uh, from way back in June. Uh, so we did fill that gap, you know, quote unquote, fill that gap because we almost created like another gap off of the gap down Thursday into Friday. Um, but ultimately, I, I do believe just based on the futures movement and the push down through that liquidity was taken there um, and we have slightly filled that gap. So with that being said, you know, we did push back down and find a support. It looks like at about 528.50. Uh, so just under that 530 level. Now, five, or, yeah, 530 was our previous kind of resistance a while back. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we can get a bounce here or not. Now, obviously, spoiler alert, I have kind of looked at futures already, so I know that we are pushing down at the moment, um, but that doesn't mean that we won't necessarily recover. But as of right now, you know, 528.50, that low of day that on Friday is going to act as our temporary support. Uh, again, it was a previous resistance spot way back here where we had to break through it in order to continue up this way prior. So I would expect it to hold a little bit of weight in this area as far as that, that upper 520s. Um, to see if we can possibly get a bounce. So Thursday, uh, Thursday and Friday, and mainly just an absolute you know meltdown. I would say for the market, and you know, we had a very strong push to the downside. Um, you know, looking from the top here, about 554, 555, all the way down to 528. We haven't seen you know a drop like this in in quite some time. Even the pops, the pushes up, weren't quite this strong. But generally, you know, markets will push down much harder than they'll ever push up. Um, so it's it's very easy. It's much easier for the market to liquidate uh, rather than you know, essentially volume to come in and buy to the upside. So always remember that the moves to the downside will always be more volatile than the moves to the upside. Um, you know, nine times out of ten. So as of right now, you know, outside of what you can already see here, we're in a very bearish trend. We've been in a bearish trend for quite some time, uh, pushing to the downside. If we start to look in here on the, you know, slightly smaller time frames, the four hour, etc., you can see, you know, we're already starting to see things like, you know, little crossovers of the EMAs, our, two, our 20 EMA on the four hour EMA, or sorry, the 20 EMA on the 200 EMA on the four hour. Uh, you can see a very strong crossover right there. Um, very bearish signal, you know, typically can signal trend shifts, um, which we already knew we were in a downtrend, but maybe that we are entering a stronger downtrend. So just some little context clues to keep an eye on. As far as um, levels going into tomorrow, 15 minute time frame, 
you know, again, I already kind of know that we're bearish as far as uh, the futures. We're already pushing down. So if for some reason we do recover the futures overnight, downside wise, I'd be looking at this level here at about 530.52, 530.50, just about. If you want to be really safe, kind of this intraday low here at 529.50 might even be a better uh, spot for you. Uh, that should take us down to Friday's low there, at which, you know, we do have more headroom to the downside if we want. Uh, but as of right now, those will be the levels to watch out for the downside. Upside, we had that intraday push back up to about 533.20. I expect that same level as we touched it, you know, very small right here. Intraday on Friday, we touched it here. We also broke above slightly. And then we also got rejected off of it here. So this is all within a 45 minute span uh, that that level kind of held as a resistance. And then we tried it again at the end of the day, had no luck. So as of right now, that 533.20 level tonight would be the level I'd be watching for upside. These levels, just so you guys know, they are subject to change by the morning time. We have a lot of volatility that comes in overnight as well as in the morning. Um, so they're, there's, they're bound to change, but as of right now, just li simply looking at what we can see, I would say that 533.20 upside, and then if you want to, 530.50 could be the start to the downside, 529.50 would be the, uh, the definite push to the downside in my opinion. Uh, as far as QQQ, we're going to have a very similar story on this one. I will say the QQQ has been a little more bearish for, for a little longer um, in terms of we have one more candle here. Uh, that did kind of top side us more of a. Oh. You want what? I'm going to punch your phone. Oh, okay. Hold on, buddy. Here, take this. And then go back to mommy. Well, you got to move that stuff out of your way then. Oh, Jesus. Hold on, guys. All right. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so yeah, like I was saying, QQQ has been a little more bearish for a little longer. I would say we had this kind of topside candle that we identified a couple of weeks back, um, kind of identifying more of an evening star style candle. So those are reversal candles. Um, they they typically can give just a little more insight into you know when we see these kind of form, we can almost anticipate that there could be a little bit of drawdown afterwards. So we almost anticipated this week we would have uh, a little bit more bearish sentiment, you know, three weeks back, and then so on and so forth. You can see um, it just pushed back down to that 20 EMA. Now, we are getting a little bit more strength pushing through this 20 EMA on the weekly for QQQ, um, indicating that tech is looking a little bit more weak as QQQ tends to have a lot more tech stocks um, within the ETF. So we are pushing down through it. Uh, as of right now, long term wise on the weekly, we do still have this support over here at 442. Uh, be very interesting to see if this can hold up uh, because if 442 does get lost, I think it's a pretty strong drop at least to the 430, uh, like 431 to 433 kind of area. And then we also have obviously this this low down here at 413, which is very possible. You know, I know it is it is about 40 basis points away or not 40 basis points, but $40 away. Um, but very, very possible. We can definitely see that drop if it really wants to, uh, especially with this kind of increasing volume. You can see as we zoom out, we haven't really seen this volume since, I mean, honestly, since uh, April, you know, when we had the bigger drop down here and you can see in one single week, we did drop 442 down to that 413. So very possible to see that kind of a drop um, in a week's time. But overall in the daily right now, we are again, still trending down. Uh, we didn't really have a gap like we did on SPY back there to fill up, uh, but we did push down lower, very strong sell candles from a high of 476 down to a low of 444, almost $30 in a full week, uh, or sorry, in two days rather. Um, so very strong bearish sentiment right now. As far as where we can go from here, again, we identified the 442 area that we have from over here. 
we could possibly see 442 get touched here this week um, at the very least uh, but I wouldn't I wouldn't really knock off you know the 200 EMA off the table uh, as far as for the daily so where we have this kind of 432 uh, 433 area 431 if you will um, we do still have a little bit of a bullish gap right over here it still hasn't really gotten filled um, to the downside so that's that's going all the way down to the 427 uh, from about 427 up to about 432 so we do have that gap down there that can definitely still get filled if the bears want to push down harder 15 minute time frame we're gonna have a very similar levels uh, to spy in terms of uh, for mapping it out I will say it's a little bit lower on my list here at 446.40 for the uh, initial drop. So wouldn't wouldn't really test up here like we did with SPY at 446.80. We'd really be looking at that 446.40 uh, level right just about there. That should give way to push us down towards that 444.50 low and probably give us 442 if I'm, if I'm being honest. I think we'll push through 444 pretty quick. As far as for upside, I really, honestly, I really don't want to go upside until 450. I think anything prior to 450, you're going to get prematurely um, pushed back down. You know, that 450 psychological level is likely to be uh, where, where buyers are going to want to break through to, to continue the push, uh, at least up towards the high day that on Friday, 453.60. Um, possibly even pushing into that kind of overnight gap there. Um, up to 457. So that's what I'm looking at there on SPY QQQ. Um, I'm going to really quickly, I'm going to change my screen over to trading view just so you guys can see. Let me open that up. Uh, there we go. All right, so I'm going to open my screen up here to uh, trading view. This is essentially going to. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I gotta meet you. All right, <clears throat> going over to trading view here. So if you guys aren't familiar with like futures and stuff, uh, essentially NQ is QQQ's kind of like what it what it says future. It, it basically lets you know what's going on here in the future at the moment. The stock market technically opened up at 6 p.m. tonight, uh, so we can kind of see already. This would have been the closing right here from Friday you can see that we closed there um, and we have already pushed down much lower so right here this would have been equivalent I don't know why it's, it's trying to lock but essentially this line right here I'll make it orange this would be the equivalent to our breakdown level that we were looking at um, and then the low of day there on Friday would be right about here so you can see we've already pushed down underneath the low of day I'm not entirely sure what this would translate to. Um, MHM might be able to help me out here because I know we do have an indicator that lets us kind of know. I just don't know if we have it for NQ. Um, but this will probably, if I had to guess, translate down into like the mid 430s, um, if not 440, like the mid 430s to 440, uh, just about. So we're definitely dumping, like we're definitely taking a nosedive right now, continuing that de that bullish tr or sorry bearish trend. Um, so you can see here on futures, we're already dumping um, on NQ. Let's check out SPY. I would anticipate the same thing. Oh, that's SPY. I'm an idiot. ES, sorry. ES is the SPY futures. Um, so very similar. Not quite as hard of a dump as NQ. Uh, seems like here was the low of day here from Friday. Let me put a put a circle. So right there, that level is that low of day there on Friday. So you can see we're already pushing. We have a big gap down. Buyers tried to fill that gap up a little bit, but I would arguably say it was more of a retracement from the breakout from the breakdown level. You can see we pulled right back into that golden zone for the sellers and then push down lower. So markets are already kind of crumbling um, at the moment, pushing down lower. So definitely anticipating that a lot of these stocks, a lot of the ones we're going to look at here tonight are likely to be down um, pretty heavily in the morning. But that's that. So that's NQ and ES. 
Um, like I said, those are the futures. If you guys want to learn more about futures, we do have a whole futures room uh, down in our Discord. Would highly recommend if you're looking for something different to try and trade that you might actually excel in. Um, if if stock trading isn't working out too too much for you, or you're having struggles with options, etc., highly highly recommend uh, trying out the futures room. What's up, buddy? What do you need? Okay. But yeah, so if you guys want to try out the futures room, uh, that trades basically like 24 hours a day. It's like 23 hours technically because um, 5 to 6 is very low liquidity or closed. And then uh, 5 days a week. So Sunday night all the way to Friday at, I think Friday at 8 if I'm correct. So that is futures. I'll go ahead and hop back on over to Weeble. All right, so back on Weeble here, we're going to go over a couple of stocks that you guys have mentioned in the chat here so far, starting out chronologically from the top to the bottom. Bless you. All right, IWM. So we'll start off with IWM here. I know I have a lot of a lot of lines on this chart, so I'm going to just clear all those out real quick. So weekly chart here on WIWM, uh, obviously a very bearish candle, very uh, bearish engulfing. You know, engulfed the prior week's candle and continued on lower. Daily wise, again, just a complete meltdown from the top there, 228. Uh, got almost all the way to 230 and then just got completely knocked down. So very big push to the downside. We do have a gap from Friday, or sorry, from Thursday into Friday. Um, from about 214, 215 down to 209. So is it likely that we fill this gap? I, I don't think so, honestly. I think it's more likely that we would fill this gap down to the downside from the initial push up. Um, so I would say, you know, 207 obviously seems to be that support level if we just look at the low of day there. Just about 207, a hair underneath of it. Um, so that would be honestly the main low side level that i'm watching for a breakdown uh if you want to look on futures i think the futures for iwm is rty that's r as in ralph t as in tom y as in yellow um you should be able to see the futures for iwm there if you wanted to look at it on trading view and just see how it's performing or you can obviously look on uh robin hood i think robin hood should let you know maybe at eight actually but essentially downside, like I said, about 207 upside wise, I would be looking at this level up here at about essentially 210. I think 210 psychological level is likely to be the more um, relative spot as far as for the upside push to give you the meaningful push to the upside. You see in pre-market, we had the big meltdown there off of Friday's news. Jasper, hey, if you're gonna talk, you gotta go downstairs. What's wrong? What do you need? Take the, why don't you take the phone and go down with mommy? Okay. Thank you. So yeah, two tenths to the upside, 207 to the downside. If I was a betting man, I would say that we're probably already well underneath of 210, or sorry, 207. Um, so primarily focus on focusing on this gap, uh, getting most likely filled down towards that 204, is it? Just about 204. Check out Tesla. All right, so Tesla, um, Tesla from what I've been watching over the years and seeing is it kind of trends almost opposite of the market sometimes. Now I will say that over the last couple of weeks, it's been definitely trending a lot more with the market um, in terms of you know Thursday, Friday, we had the meltdown, we had the push down. Now Tesla's already at its like 200 EMA right there. We've already filled all these inconsistencies, these gaps uh, from the bulls. They've already been filled. Now we do have upside potential right here that did not quite get filled uh, by the bulls for the bear gap down. You know, obviously we do still have, I think a gap way, way down here. Yeah, so we still got a gap way down here from about, uh, what is it? One third, 140 all the way up to just about 160. 
I don't believe that's going to get filled here really anytime soon. I think it'll we're, we're a couple weeks out from hitting that, even if we start dropping to the low side. Uh, so right now I'd be focusing on the fact that we just closed out that daily on this 200 EMA right here. So we closed it out right there. Not a bullish candle, not a bullish reversal candle by any means, but we are sitting on that 200 EMA right there at about that 205.50 level, just about that low of day there on Friday. You can see we probably, if we want to drop down more, we could have a little bit more uh, room down to 200, 201-ish. Um, and then there's likely, in my opinion, a chance for a bounce. Now, again, I, I don't know the future, um, but I would say that there's there's a good chance that Tesla can find a bounce area in here. But if it does want to drop down, I think 205.50 gives way to 201 uh, to 200. If we go in on the 15 minute just to kind of see what's happening here. Again, 205. 75. If you want to use that level, basically that low of day or 205.50. And then upside, yeah, I don't even like that level to be honest. Yeah, I kind of, I think I like this level better. So 210, 210 on Tesla. I think 210 would be the spot I would look for for a push back to the upside. We have levels at 212. Uh, we got resistance here at about 214. And then obviously the, the 15 minute 200 EMA right here, which will probably slope down to the high of day, about 215, 216. So, uh, Tesla, you know, while it's been on a very, very bearish trend, um, I think it, it is kind of due for a bounce here soon. Um, but we'll just have to see. Again, 205 gives way to 201. 210 gives way to, you know, the teens, the low teens to mid. FNGU. FNGU. What is FNGU? FNGU. Micro sectors. Fang. I'm not really sure what this is, to be honest just a, a 3x style uh, daily wise you know just look at the overall volume on this I can already tell it's very low liquidity um, so I'm gonna kind of base it off of mainly the daily levels because I feel like they're the the more important ones to watch out for here uh, so with that being said high a day there 357 357.50 just about it looks like um, and then low of day there was about 327.56, 327.60. Uh, so we're, we are sitting down at, you can see this previous one right over here. We're kind of bouncing. It almost looks like we want to try and bounce from that, that specific spot in the low 20s. Um, the 200 EMA is here for support. Buyers didn't really show strength necessarily on Friday, but I think there's a very good chance um, that we can, we can push up uh, off of that twenty, that two hundred EMA there. Now, if we do start to lose three twenty five, looks like three twenty five specifically. If we do break underneath of that, we've got some pretty decent headroom uh, down. You know, so I don't think this three twenty two level is going to hold off too well. I think we're more likely to get a bounce, maybe down at three hundred flat, um, since we do still have this kind of gap right here. It's likely that the sellers will target it. 300 to 311 they could ramp up the selling pressure so that's what i would use again with these only having about a million uh looks like on, on a good day actually um 1.5 on any given normal day it looks like it has just about a million um would would really stick to just those daily levels um do, 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 do. cmg cmg james was uh, I didn't skip you, bro. You were next. <laughs> I just did FNGU. CMG, Chipotle. All right, Chipotle here, looking at it on the weekly. I know Chipotle doesn't get like a crazy amount of volume um, as well. You know, daily wise, it gets like, it gets decent volume, like 20 million um, on a good day, I guess. But it looks like mainly any given day, you're looking at about 20 to 25. That's, that's pretty good volume. Never mind. Forget what I said there. Let me get rid of these uh, drawings here, as I feel like they're slightly irrelevant at this point. Let's look at the weekly. Um, weekly wise, had that push down off the market. Uh, push down, it looks like. Actually, I think most of that came from the earnings. 
Yeah, so after earnings there, we are about 55, 67, push it down to 49. I know these guys did a split not too long ago, and you know typically after splits, stocks tend to push down a little bit more. Um, we did get a push up to that prior high there at about 54, 64, uh, but then ultimately got pushed back down. This week, we went for a push back up to that, you know, just about 55 spot, but we did ultimately get rejected by the 20 EMA there, pushing down. Friday's candle, not a bad close, honestly. It, it, it's actually a pretty good close, um, showing a little bit more strength. I would have liked to see this wick a little longer uh, with the buy up, but ultimately, not a bad candle. Um, for Chipotle, I'm going to use the hourly time frame just because I know it is. it has 20 million, but it's not like crazy liquid. So on the, on the uh, hourly here, Honestly, in order for us to flip bullish, we're, we're really going to need to see like a break of that 20, 200 EMA. So, you know, on the hourly, I'm thinking it's going to be around 53 by tomorrow morning. So I would say about $53 is your breakout kind of spot. Uh, we could see as high as 53.50. If it really wants to push up, can likely see up towards that 54 spot. No crazy movements on these. Downside wise, we are in a bearish trend, so I would say that the next low here that we're kind of looking at is about 52, looks like 52.20. I'm kind of eyeing this candle here where intraday we made a small little tap. And then you can see intraday here on Friday, we also, oh wow, let just move that. You can see we also just kind of tapped down at like 52.25 just about. Why does this keep moving? It's terrible. Hold on. 53 there we go this one come down here all right 5225 um just about right here that kind of intraday support i think if we could break underneath that we get a push down under 52 so overall still in a bearish trend um would definitely be looking at more for downside but there are potential for both ends so check out let's check out amd here get rid of a lot of this stuff Put on the daily time frame all right let me just see here I see you just sending a message here um, uh, am I seeing a head and shoulder on the weekly for AMD um, no not really i mean i i get what you're seeing here i understand like you're looking at you know this shoulder here and then we we basically peaked out at the exact same spot just about right there it's hard to call it a true head and shoulders because honestly with these patterns when you when you're looking for these patterns guys they they really do look almost perfect like when they are true to their true to what they are they almost look exactly like you would see in a textbook um, so for a head and shoulders, you know, I would have more, I more so would have liked to see it kind of bounce right here and then come up and peak right there. So we would have had a very true looking head and shoulders pattern right in here. I don't love when they extend like this. I would say it's more so than anything like the push down right here. And then you have let me adjust this trend line. Uh, we had the push down right here and then you had kind of this almost flag style pattern right here like a broadening to the upside and you can see we're already breaking it down i would say that that's more so what you're looking at i, I do get what you're saying i really do um, but i would say that more so we had the push down we had kind of an upward channel almost forming like a flag and then we had the breakdown right now so uh always keep in mind with the patterns and stuff they're almost textbook like the way you would see it in the book is almost identical to how it should look um for it for it to hold for it to hold as as much sentiment but overall weekly wise amd is just melting uh right now we are pushing down beneath lows you can see we had this weekly low way back here at about 134s we're already pushing down through that i i think the next likely target is probably down into the, the teens uh the low 20s to the teens on the daily time frame you can see we're already starting to see some early signs uh, of a of a pretty sharp crossover, the 20 EMA through the 200, very bearish signal. 
rid of this. Uh, but overall, just very, very bearish. I mean, there's really nothing about this that looks bullish to me. Um, you know, we had a, a very tight inside candle closed there on Friday where we didn't really create a new low or a new high. We kind of just traded within Thursday's range. I would be in, I would be anticipating that we're likely to see a drop, um, continuation back down. And I think that's, what's going to give us the low twenties. So let's look here on the 30, I'll go on the 30 minute just to show a little more data here. Honestly, there's really no reason to look upside on this um, at all right now. Even, even with a break of this high a day here on Friday, we're likely to, to retest that 200 EMA. I wouldn't even look upside on this until we really start to see some, some headroom. Um, I think, honestly, like way up here, about 139.30. When this 200 comes down tomorrow morning, it's likely to be around right there. I think that that 139.30 level is likely to be the, the push spot to start looking back into calls. Until then, I would just short the pops um, and then downside wise, you know, look for this this level down here at about 132, just about 132. 132 should give us uh, some leg room under 130 and then so on and so forth. You guys know the story. So that's what, that's what I look at there on AMD. All right, Meta. Wow, a lot of suggestions tonight. It's cool to see a nice uh, full full house in here. So on the daily time frame, um, thank you. Uh, on the daily time frame here for Meta. Obviously, very strong push to the upside uh, in the middle of the week there, Wednesday into Thursday. Had that big push up, but then ultimately did get pushed right back down. Now, it's not like a totally bearish candle here. We, we had a little more indecision. It looks like the, the sellers push it down probably early in the morning, if I had to guess. Um, and then the buyers did recoup it, or vice versa. A little bit of both. I mean, the buyers had to push up in the morning. Then the pull back down, the buyers did recover it pretty well. Um, they, they couldn't really hold it over, it looks like 492, 493. So a little bit discouraging considering that was our low day on Thursday. So they basically turned a support into a resistance. Um, so I would be leaning a little more downside on this one at the moment. As far as upside, can almost take some upside levels here at about four. 489.30, if you want to be safe, basically 490, I think is the spot. You break out over that, you can get a little bit more leg room back into the mid 90s. Downside, looking at that 484, looks like 484.40, kind of a pre market low as well as that very end of the day low. Uh, could give us a little bit of push back down into the 470s. All right, I'm going to start speeding through these just a little bit because I know that there's a lot of suggestions in here. Google, uh, it's going to be a very similar story for a lot of these tech stocks anyways. Um, likely to see more downside just due to the market pulling back. As of right now, you know, I did kind of map out this before. It looks like a little bit of a gap uh, for the bulls. Uh, gap up from the bulls there. Did pull back prior, tried to fill it a little bit. Looks like this is actually the total gap right here. So we still have a little bit more room underneath of 162, 162.70, uh, down to that 200 EMA right there, probably be about 157-ish. Nice candle there on Friday, a pretty decent indecisive close for the bulls. Gives a little bit of relief signs possibly, but again, if the market se seems to flush, I think we'll just continue downward. 15 minute wise, give a level, let me, let me get rid of, put that up there for now. Get rid of these guys. All right, so upside level here, I'd probably be looking at about 167. 167 kind of intraday high as well as uh, after hours high. If we push up there, you know, we're likely to be met with that 200 EMA. Please. So you might even want to place your actual call level more towards like 169 if you want to be safe. Downside. We've got this uh, intraday low day right around 165, 165 psych level. 
think is going to be pretty definitive. If we push down through that, we'll likely push down the low of day Friday pretty heavily. Uh, we do have 164 as another support down here uh, from a couple, looks like about a week ago. Um, I'd probably be watching out for that one to possibly bounce again. Uh, but again, if we give way to 164, we got to push a decent push back down to uh, the 200 EMA on the daily. We have a gap here underneath of 162.50. Um, so a lot more downside room right now than I think upside. Get crowd, crowd strike. So crowd strike. Ever since that whole um, that whole thing that they did, where they you know messed up with the security and had all the planes thrown Order. off, etc. Uh, the cybersecurity issue. They have Order. since been kind of just pushing down just melting off the face of the earth right now um we are seeing push down as low as you know 240 level got pushed down through we did just fill a small little gap down here 215 to 220 um so that gap just got filled now i will say we had this support looks like right down around here at 201 200 flat as we approach 200, I'd be very weary of continuing to be bearish on this. This right here is a very sharp crossover. Um, 20 MA through the 200, you know, very, very bearish. So overall, you know, not looking too good on this one. Um, as far as for the levels, I'm going to use the hourly again, just because I know this is fairly low liquid. Uh, upside, be looking at that high a day, wick out at 221.70. And then for the breakdown spot, let's say it's arguably around 213, 214, 8, sorry, 214, just about 214. Oh, I just realized I skipped Lisa. Give me a second here. Microsoft, I'll come back to you, uh, Frogs there. Microsoft here. Daily wise, pushing down on the 200 EMA. Um, these kinds of setups are interesting because we could definitely see a little bit of a push off this area as we did see it before. Um, so I'd be watching it. We have the 200 EMA on our side as well. So push right down to that 405 like we had. We could see the bounce here um, just forward looking. If it does break down, we've definitely got more room to the downside. I would say, i.e., first, first level about 395. Second level down just a hair under 390. The zone 6676 replied to MHM that Apple meltdown is gonna be crazy. All right, let me see here. 15 minute wise, uh, intraday. If you want to take a, a quick call scalp, if anything, again, these anything to the call side these this week, guys, is gonna be very much scalp worthy. I wouldn't stay in them really long at all. Get in, get some green, get out. Um, the, the more of the money is going to be made on the downside. But upside there's 409 upside. And then again, uh, 405, I think 405 is generally the level. If you want to be safe, low of day there, 40430. Uh, but generally speaking, I think 405 is your, is your level to watch for a breakdown. Uh, beyond. Nope, wrong one. All right, Beyond Meat, uh, not a lot of volume, typically on the daily time frame. I think that Beyond is getting down towards, if it's not already at lows. Yeah, it's at all-time lows right now. Um, I wouldn't really watch this. This one kind of just peaks every now and then because it gets a pretty high short interest. Um, so the short sellers tend to cover after a little bit and give it a good push up. But honestly, until we break that high of day there from Friday looks like about six six dollars. Wouldn't really look upside on this. I think if we break five fifty, there's a good chance we continue on lower. Beyond is kind of just getting beaten down. Um, so I, I would try and stay away from this one if I were you. Uh, just look at other stocks. But upside wise, six dollars. You really got to see that break. Um, arguably more like six point three, six point two five, six point three. They do have earnings. It looks like on. Wednesday so be very interesting to see with a very beaten down stock 
um, if it wants to go even lower. Uh, I would find it hard to believe that it would go lower, but it definitely could. So, uh, TSM, Taiwan Semi. Uh, just like the other semi stocks, you know, Nvidia, AMD, etc. You know, just getting beaten down right here. Let me just get rid of this. Just getting beaten down. You know, we are kind of again similar to Microsoft, finding a little bit of a bottom there. Um, back here at about 147, just about. As far as which level to watch out for exactly, I'm gonna use the hourly. Again, we have that low of day level 147. That would be my downside to watch for. As far as for upside, I, I think a break over 152.75 to try and enter into that pre-market gap from Friday could probably pay out really well. Uh, would watch though on the on the 152.75 break, we still could possibly see some pushback at about 155, um, but that would be the most the most uh, bullish level you could probably find right now. Overall, bearish trend, no reason to really take calls on it. Um, it would be more so uh, looking for a possible push down to this 200 on the daily. TMF. TMF, directional 20-year treasury. So this one's definitely getting a push up. I'm assuming the treasury bonds are going through the roof because the market's you know, dumping is typically what ends up happening. Um, so we're pushing up right now. The next possible resistance point, I think, is up here at about 61.75. Uh, with that being said, again, something that doesn't necessarily get a lot of volume typically. So right now it's, it's hard to identify exactly which levels, but I am gonna use the four hour um, mainly for this 59.60, so the high a day there. And then I'm going to save this intraday here at 58.70. So that, that four hour candle we closed out right there, I think this is going to be a pivotal candle, especially since we closed inside on the next one. 59.60 upside, 58.70 downside with a resistance up here at 61.75. BTI, British America. I don't really know what this is. I'm assuming this might be an airline. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. This thing is, uh, as of right now on the weekly time frame, is pushing up pretty hard. Just pushed over 3626, 3630 area. We have a little more room. It looks like up to 37, uh, and then 37, you know, five just about. This has been pushing up for looks like quite some time this is the weekly candles and we're we got a pretty strong crossover on the weekly which is great um but it looks like for the last like five weeks we've just been consistently pushing uh, at some point it's gonna have to retrace we have a bull gap right here that could get filled as far as levels on this again volume on the daily doesn't look amazing looks like at any given day is about six million we have been getting a little more volatility lately 37 is that kind of upside resistance. Uh, I'll use this four hour here to just see. Looks like upside. We're going to want that 36.50 break. And then downside. Honestly, at this point, downside wise, I would wait for 35.70. So that should be a break just underneath of the 20 EMA on the four hour, as well as a push down through uh, this kind of wick candle we had here. Check out Avgo, Avgo Broadcom Inc. You can see on Avgo here, pushing down, downtrend, uh, pretty severe, just like the case with most of our stocks. We are on a bit of a support, it looks like, down here. Uh, from prior, you can see we had a, a pretty specific level right at about was it 140, just about. Yep, just about 140. So you can see that 140 did hold, it did bounce so far. Um, would like to see some continuation. I think it's very possible to, to see a retest of 150 before it could continue lower. If we look on the 30 minute time frame, actually, let's check this out. Yeah, it gets okay volume. I'm gonna use the hourly here uh, for Avco just because volume is like meh. 
Uh, upside wise, we had that kind of intraday push there up to 145.35. I think 145.60, that pre-market high is the, is the more likely level to give us a push towards 150. So I would watch that for the upside break. Downside, downside you could use about 142, 141.90 just about for the push back down under 140. Um, anything else, you know, kind of risky. Uh, you could also just wait for that breakdown of 139.60. I think even with the breakdown, the low a day, your reward here is going to still be very, very good. So if you want to be safe, just wait for that low of day break. Check out Palantir. Uh, Palantir here, just getting absolutely beaten down with the market. It's... It's unfortunate because Palantir was on a really nice trend uh, for a long time there. And then I think the market suffering here has just kind of not helped its case, to be honest. Uh, getting a decent push down under the daily 20 EMA. An okay buy up right there. Looks like we do have earnings tomorrow. I'm not sure if it's uh, in the morning or at nighttime. We do have earnings tomorrow, Monday. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Honestly, with earnings on this one, Truthfully, I wouldn't even touch it. I think it's uh, it's going to be a waste of your time. You'll probably just get chopped up. Um, you know, even on the 30 minute wait, 30 minute wise, you could probably see a, a scalp opportunity up to 2490. You know, 2490 breakout could probably give you up into the 25s, um, and then downside. You know, if you look at this low day here, about 2425, not low day, intraday low day. Uh, but like I said, honestly, on, on Palantir here, I would try your best not to even trade it. Um, if you are going to trade these levels, it would really make it a habit to be in and out quick. I'm talking like don't don't ever say you're welcome max five minutes in the trade. So get, get a good entry and then get out. Check out NVIDIA. Uh, NVIDIA, I think, does have earnings this week. Uh, we're, we're coming up, not this week, sorry. It's got earnings at the end of August. So there's still more room to push down if it wants to. Uh, we have a very clear gap here from 96 up to about 102 um, that the, the bears seem to be targeting. We did get a bounce off that 102 level, it looks like. Uh, you know, pushing back to the upside, or it looks like 10140. So right now, Friday's candle, not a bad close. Honestly, a, a pretty strong close for NVIDIA. I'm going to use this 30-minute time frame just to, to identify NVIDIA here. So we have we have a level, that, that high of day there at 108.80. You could probably get yourself a call position at about 107.80 and, and wait for the push up here to the 200 EMA, which will likely be at about 111. Uh, come tomorrow, 110, 111 area. So again, call sidewise, you'd be looking at more of a scalp. Wouldn't overstay your welcome in this one. Uh, downside is more favorable on this at the moment. Looks like about 104.60. 104.60 should give us that push back down into the low 100s. And again, that gap is right down there. We could possibly push down into it with the right volume. Uh, so something worth worth noting there. Check out VZ, Verizon. All right, so it looks like Verizon here had a nice push up back into the bear gap, has since filled that gap and are starting to get a rejection. This typically does tend to happen after gaps get filled where you can possibly see reversals. Um, this is a pretty strong, almost reversal sign. I'd be, I'd be interested to see if they can continue pushing this down. Verizon, not good volume typically on the daily, so I am looking at this uh, from the hourly time frame. I think upside, in order to continue to see the upside push, we'd like to see 41, just about 41.20 break to the upside. Downside, I would be looking at that low of day Low of day 4040. I think that'll give us the push under the hourly 200 EMA. Should show some strength for for sellers to push it down. Uh, possibly looks like possibly even down into those mid 
39s. 39.70, 39.80, somewhere in there. Uh, looking at Robinhood, everything is down. Microsoft 395 right now. Yeah, I figured. Um, I figured a lot of these stocks are gonna just take pretty decent bloodbaths. The Bank of Japan as is down pretty heavily right now too. So it's a very interesting time we're in. AEHR. AEHR. Wow, this looks superbly ugly. Uh, daily wise very clear rejection looks like off our 200 EMA pushing right down through the 20 as well they have a gap down here that still can get filled uh, from about 1250 up to about 14 I think it's more likely than anything that will just continue down at the moment looks looks pretty bearish we have a little gap here but honestly I, I don't see that getting filled I don't really see that getting filled just yet um, It'd be interesting to see what happens here. I'm not entirely sure what this AHR is. I don't know if this is um, one of one of Alpha's swings or if this is just something you're looking at. But overall, it does not look very good. Volume, nothing crazy uh, on the daily. So I would simply use that 15, looks like 1590, just about top side level. And then bottom level, about 1430. Uh, for your break up, up or down. ASNS. This might also be one of Alpha's swings. I know he tends to trade this one. This is a good R and R stock, honestly. Just uh, rinse and repeat. You know, pushes up, pulls back down to the same area, pushes up, pulls back down, pushes up, pulls back down, pushes up. It's very, almost. I don't know. You you almost know what it's gonna do. It's predictable. Um, as of right now, upside wise, I would honestly focus on that 160, looks like 164 to 165. And then downside, we did just push up there. I would say downside, you could probably catch under 140. Uh, 140, if you want to be really safe, would wait for 130. Uh, AEHR is off a long term swing, taking profits out of speed levels. Perfect. Yes, and it's taking profits already. All right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There you go. Hopefully that answers your question, Jules. That's why I kind of figure AS, ASNS is more of a, an R&R &R kind of stock. Any thoughts on SMCI? Beating down in his sleep tonight. <laughs> I, I really will, honestly. This, this, market is, this market is ridiculous right now. A lot of stocks just getting swamped. SMCI. Get rid of all this mumbo jumbo. So SMCI, a pretty decent breakout way, way back. This is on the weekly time frame. Ever since we had that push from the 280s up to the 1200s, uh, I believe this pushed up with NVIDIA for the most part. So ever since we pushed up there, it's been ever since down, down, down. Very similar pattern to like SPY, three, you know, kind of, I forget what they call it to the downside. I don't know if it's it's not black crow. It might be black crows. Um, but essentially, you know, a very bearish signal here. You know, just looking at this, is, it just keeps melting. Now, Friday's candle is interesting because we had the the really strong push down to 580, 582, um, and then we did recover it pretty strongly back up to 620. Would have liked to see this candle close out green, close more of a hammer. Um, so I'm not completely sold on the push up yet uh, we do have a little bit of a gap there from 630 up to 670 but i'm not completely sold on the idea of pushing up just yet um, we don't have any like gaps to the downside really to fill um, so i think from here we're really just looking for you know certain levels certain breakout levels to break uh, smci doesn't get like crazy volume on the daily it's like four mil it does have earnings though on Tuesday, so it's something to, to look at or keep an eye on. I don't know if it is Tuesday morning or Tuesday night. If it's Tuesday morning, I would be more inclined to say that we'll probably get one strong push in the morning followed by just chop. If it's Tuesday night, we could possibly see a move tomorrow uh, and then Tuesday we'll see chop.
just my opinion. Um, but because of the low liquidity on this, I'll use the four hour just to give a, a, a couple of levels to play off. I think right here, 629. So 629 here, the reason I chose this level is just how much we've spent underneath of it. Haven't been able to break back above it. We attempted to, it looks like they're uh, earlier in the day, like probably at the 11, looks like 11 o'clock to noon maybe. Let me see here. Oh, I'm pretty good. Yeah, so at, at about noon, um, you can see we had that push up, tried to push up above 630, and then ultimately got pushed back. So I think that that level is going to hold a little bit more weight. Obviously, to the downside, if you want to be safe, 582.46, 582.50 would be a good level. You could also probably start your, um, your push to the downside around 609. Uh, this low day, or sorry, this intraday uh, four hour candle here looks like our low is 608.50. So 608.50 just about could be a good breakdown spot as well. BFI, Burger Fi International. I think I've ever heard of this one. Uh, daily. Um, as of right now, not looking amazing. We're definitely getting a little more of a rejection off that 200 that I would have liked. Um, pushing down. I want to see what happens here at about 40 cents flat. If 40 cents flat can hold up, we can probably see a push back up into, uh, back up to about 50, maybe a touch into the 50s. Oh. You guys there? Can you guys still see my screen? I'm freezing up. Yeah, we can hear you and see you, James. Okay. So go ahead. Give me just a moment while my program reloads. All right, there we go. But yeah, overall, BFI, um, not looking great. I don't love this kind of a push down candle. The volume doesn't necessarily support it, but that could also just mean that it's lacking volume in general, which typically leads to pushes down um, I would just simply use those high day low day breaks for right now so about 42 to the downside you, know, you could look at the the 54 to the upside 40 cents I think is a, a fairly low risk entry if you wanted to start a position around there and just keep this this uh, 20 EMA here as your kind of stop loss if you will so maybe uh, around that 35, that's a that's a decent risk trade. I think if you go to 40, it goes down to 35. I don't know the math there, but I would say it's like, is that 15, 20% 15, right there risk? BBLG, BBLG. I always hear this stock, I hear about it. I'm not sure if it's just an R&R &R stock. Uh, but a decent, actually a kind of a nice formation right here. Excuse me. I had that wick up here. I'm not sure if it had news with the push up to fours. But we did recently recover back up to the fours, or just about the fours, uh, 375, you know, with a nice little squeeze here almost. Uh, as far as pulling back, we're respecting the four hour 20 MA right now. I really need to see this thing push up above 305 looks like or basically back over three three dollars um to see some upside room back to 375 but not not too bad honestly um bbig is an R. that's kind of what i figured it almost looks like I, i've seen this name so many times you know it usually gets the nice pops around the same levels but uh very interesting kind of you can't really call it a a, a cup and handle but it is kind of close in resemblance you have that that u kind of motion here followed by the little handle if we can push three we might actually be able to maybe confirm a possible cup and handle here um, but it'd be very interesting to see if we get that push as of right now you know upside wise three dollars i think we could probably see back to the downside under 240s Looks like 240s. I think it would give way. I don't believe that this level here at 212 
uh, or sorry, 220 will hold. I think we're likely to see a push back down to $2 flat, if anything. BDJX. James, can I add one thing on BBLG before you move on? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So with BBLG, what you will see is like this thing has an extremely high CTB. Okay, so anyone shorting this has to be very careful because the last time I checked, the CTB was close to 400%. So which makes it a nightmare to short this thing unless this really breaks down and this has a pretty thin float so if you look at it the chart that i posted that whenever it is coming near those areas of support we see the heavy buying over here okay and that gives you a pretty decent like 10 to 15 percent trades on this so even if you trade just between the ranges of those support and resistance levels you should be making like decent money on this as a day trade yeah it's got actually really nice ranges like even even this low side up to this high side here i mean you're talking a, a solid i mean even if you got in in the middle of this you're looking at a nice 50 to 60 cent push um on a, on a two and a half dollar stock at that point so you know it's it's definitely a nice r and r stock uh b b d i don't know if you spelled this wrong or if i'm just not getting it maybe it's BJDX. It's BJDX. BJ for Japan. DX. Got it. Got it. Blue J Diagnostics. All right. Uh, so I can already tell you right away, I wouldn't even touch it. Um, this this kind of a push up here. You know, we're we're getting the push up, and then we're just getting pushed right back down. Obviously, a pretty heavy sell candle here. Um, looks like right away in the morning on Friday, just a take profit it looks like they got the push from you know the thursday close was about 50 cents up to as high as 75 that's a 50 percent move on the stock overnight um obviously profit taking kicked in and now we're starting to dip under even where we closed out there on friday or sorry on thursday so i would not touch this at all um at least until we get back over probably I wouldn't even touch it until we get back over like 55, 60 cents. All right, I'm gonna do one more here, guys. We're gonna go on INTC, Intel. INTC, INTC, let's get rid of some of this stuff. All right, so Intel is pushing down beneath, it looks like it has support at 30 and it is really just kind of getting hammered i mean wow actually i just noticed that it gapped down <laughs> yeah this Hold thing on, is getting ruined uh twenty dollars psychological level seems to be Hold holding on, up for right now go back here Hold on, I, I can't even find the, the twenty dollars support way back this might be like way way back yeah so way back here under twenty dollars we do have 1970 ish um, that we could also see a little bounce if we push lower, but overall just very very bearish um, I don't know if these guys I'm assuming they had earnings and that's what this drop is. I can't really see it on my chart here, but uh, Very very big drop Wouldn't look upside on this just yet. I think that we could possibly see some downside uh, more downside what likely will happen is we'll see some retracement so you can see here from the top to the bottom uh, we have this this pullback to about 20.45. Ah, now I will say, give me one second here. I just want to see something. Yeah, we just kept melting. Okay, yeah. So the very mm -hmm. bottom there, 20.42. 20 uh, we had the push down. I think retracement is likely here. We have levels, the 23% retracement. I'll just mark it off here, 22.57. And then the 38%, which is going to be essentially the top out candle. Uh, in the morning there at about 23.85 we could possibly see as high as 25 dollars in my opinion before we get the pull back down so those would be my levels again 23 percent 22.57 uh, 38 percent 23.85 and then 50 percent pullback is about 24.92 basically 25 dollar psych level I think as we approach tomorrow, this 200 is going to start sloping down. 
I highly doubt that we get any push up here on Intel if we don't already if we're not already dropped down. Um, so yeah, Intel just looking very bearish. I would look at more continuation to the downside for now. I will say though, downside continuation is getting a little thin. Um, so just be careful. Would wait for the proper entries for a short up in these areas. But yeah. Um, I think that's going to just about do it, guys. We covered a lot of stocks here. Um, obviously, a lot of these levels are going to be most likely invalidated here come tomorrow. Um, they're still The levels are still strong in the aspect of as we push back up to the upside on a lot of these stocks. You know, we're going to test these levels. We're going to see how it reacts at them. So they're, they're beneficial for your knowledge. Um, but a lot of these are going to most likely get invalidated overnight. And that's just the nature of the beast. You know, I'll be in there uh, in the morning. So if any of these you need looked at again, just tag me. I don't mind looking at them again. Um, but yeah, as far as for news this week, I'll quickly go over it. I don't believe we have really anything uh, this week. It's a, a pretty dry week as far as news. We do have, uh, looks like ISM services there at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Not too crazy. Uh, trade deficit, 8.30 Tuesday. I don't really think that's that that beneficial. Wednesday's really light. Thursday, we do have jobless claims in the morning at 8.30. That could move the market a little bit. Um, and then Friday, there's really not much scheduled. So it uh, should be, for the most part, fairly technicals as well as news. Uh, so just paying attention to all the news coming out. Um, let me see here. Let me see here. Uh, no problem, guys. No problem. The day I'm able to get James Fib video of my life. <laughs> okay, complete. <laughs> I know. I've I've been slacking, guys. I've been slacking. I I did I did make a couple videos for you guys with like the um the black box stocks. So definitely check check that out. Um, if you haven't already in the recording sessions, black box stocks. If you guys don't know, it's what I use for my flow reading. Uh, it's important to know how to read flow. I think it's a it's an important skill to have. So definitely look into that. Ask away. I will get that fit video done. Don't worry. Um, it's on my radar. I just need to uh, find some time in my free in my life. Honestly. <laughs> uh, as far as the rest of it, I was looking it might be a good time to DCA into Intel. Looks very bloody. Yeah, I mean Intel is still a very strong company long term. I think um, might not be a bad idea to even start. You know, 25% in, uh, if you get another dip, 25%. And if you start to see some true recovery, then you can go into your last 50. Thank you. No problem, guys. Uh, yeah, but that's pretty much going to do it for the night. Uh, like I said, if you guys have any questions, obviously you can shoot me a message anytime in the chat. Uh, as well as tomorrow morning, I'll be in there. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the session. If you did, please let me know. I do appreciate the words. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Have a good night, guys.